Hi everyone, it's time to talk about Kubernetes deployment. In today's session, we'll see how we can implement reliable zero downtime upgrades with rolling update strategy. Kubernetes provides two native deployment strategies that we can take advantage of depending on the needs of the system. Recreate strategy, all the pods are killed all at once and get replaced all at once with the new ones. The recreate update strategy is an all or nothing process that allows you to update all the aspects of the system at once with a brief downtime period. Rolling update strategy is a default strategy. A rolling update deployment slowly replaces pods of the previous version of an application with pods of the new version of the application without downtime, but with a minor effect on performance. Let's see together how Kubernetes performs a rolling update deployment. Let's say we are deploying a web app. We created the deployment manifest file, which points to version 1 of our application. We applied the manifest file through kubectl command. Kubernetes will create a replica set, and it's up to the replica set to schedule the required number of pods of the deployment. Great! Now we are planning for a new application release with additional features. We implemented the required features and made them available in a new image, version 2. Then we made an adjustment to the pod template inside the deployment, and changed the image to point to the new version. This modification will trigger Kubernetes to roll out a new deployment. It creates a new replica set, and now the transitions to the new version starts. The pod starts rolling out one at a time. The first pod comes up, it is health checked to make sure that the pod is running and is ready to serve traffic. Once the health check passes, the service will update itself and add the pod IP address to its endpoints and start forwarding traffic to it. Then it deletes the connection with the old pod and deletes it permanently. The deployment moves on to create another pod. Again, once the health check pass, a new traffic will come in from the service. The service deletes the connection with the old pod and then deletes it. The same process will continue until all the pods are replaced. This is how a rolling update deployment can do reliable zero downtime upgrade of software running on Kubernetes. Of course, there is some configurations that we can change to tweak the deployments to fit with our application and infrastructure requirements. So let's take a closer look. Since I am talking about the deployment strategy, I'm showing just a portion of the deployment manifest specification to focus on specific field for the deployment strategy. We have two options to select from, the rolling update or recreate. Remember, if it wasn't explicitly specified, it will default to the rolling update strategy. Two important options can be used to help us fine-tune the update process, max surge and max unavailable. Max surge ensures only the certain number of pods are created above the desired number of pods. In other words, these are the maximum number of new pods that will be created at a time. Maxim and a max unavailable, this specifies the number of pods that can be unavailable during the update process. In other words, these are the maximum number of all pods that will be deleted at a time. The value of these numbers can be an absolute number, such as 3, 4, 5, or a percentage of the desired, desired pods, for example 10%. If not specified, it defaults to 25%. So in this situation, we have 4 pods, and if it uh, uh, is 25%, then the max surge and max unavailable will be 1. To illustrate this better, let's take this deployment spec as an example and apply an update. So we have four ports, the max surge is one, the max unavailable is one. And let's try to answer these two questions. At any time, what is the maximum number of ports that will be available? This is equivalent to the replica plus max surge, which is four plus one, 
this it will be five. This means that we will have at most five pots available during the update process. The second question. At all times, what is the num minimum number available number of pots to service traffic? Four desired pots and one max unavailable, so four minus one. This means during the update, at least three pots will be available to serve traffic. Another essential concept in Kubernetes is pod readiness. We already touched on it briefly in the animation and we saw how it will allow the deployment to gradually update pods while giving us the control to determine when the rolling update can proceed. The default configuration for the deployment will result in a pod that is ready as soon as its container starts. We might have multiple containers, but we will assuming that we will have one container in this scenario. However, this is not an indication that the application can serve end user requests properly. Some application might have other dependencies and need some extra time to warm up, so it cannot service the request upon starts start startup. To overcome this problem and avoid service disruption. Kubernetes provides us with different mechanisms to perform health check. This includes readiness probes, liveness probes, and startup probes. Today, we will focus on the readiness probes, which can be used when rolling out a deployment to detect if an application is in a healthy state and ready to handle end user requests. Once the health check passes, the Kubernetes service will add will decide if the new pods will be added to end to its endpoints. In a deployment, the readiness probe configuration is part of the pod specification. As we see here, this is the deployment, this is the pod specification, and this is the word the container. It is defined per container, which means each container inside a pod is health checked separately. HTTP GET probe is used to perform an HTTP GET request against the container listening on a specific port. So here, the probe will hit the uh, endpoint called healthy. On port 80, on the container Nginx container. Any response with status code greater than or equal to 200 or 400 indicates success. To further control the behavior of the readiness probe, we can configure the following fields. Initial delay seconds is the number of the seconds after the container has started before the readiness probes are initiated. Remember to increase this number if you are expecting containers to take some time to warm up like loading a huge amount of data. Period seconds. How often in seconds to perform the probe? By default, Kubernetes will call the probe every 10 seconds to check if the application is responding correctly. Timeout seconds. How long we wait before timing out the probe? This would tell us how quickly the container needs to respond. The default time is one second. Failure threshold. We don't want to perform probes forever. So when a probe fails, how many times Kubernetes will try before giving up and marking this pod as not ready? The default is three failures. Success threshold. Is the minimum consecutive number of successes of the probe to be considered successful after having failed? It defaults to one. This was all it for today. To wrap this up, in this session we talked about Kubernetes native deployment strategies, recreate and rolling update. We focused on the rolling update and we saw an illustration of how rolling update deployment will gracefully update the application with no downtime. To control the pace at which the update process should proceed, we need to update the deployment parameters, max search and max unavailable, depending on our application and infrastructure requirements. Sometimes we might be very conservative about our application availability and decide to start new pods before shutting down old ones. 
Only after a new pot is up and running and ready, we can terminate an old one. Other times, we might have very limited capacity available on our cluster. So we cannot afford creating new pots before deleting the old ones. Also, by default, a deployment will result in a pod that is ready as soon as its container starts. Since application might need long time to warm up, then the app will fail serving end user requests. To avoid that, we cover different fields that can be tweaked to control readiness props behavior to account for the time containers need to start up.